I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land where unto ye go over Jordan to possess it. Ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. Ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. The purpose of the Tough Conversations is to help the indigenous black people make better decisions. Also, to help the generations to come succeed. It is time for the indigenous people to pass generational blessings to their children and great-grandchildren. We spend too many years hurting the next generation by passing down curses. If we want the next generation to survive and draw closer to the Most High, this generation must set better examples by making good choices. The indigenous black people can start with repenting of their sins and the sins of their fathers. The scriptures reveal to us that the Most High will visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children until the third and fourth generation. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. The reason there is an uprise in rebellion from the children in the indigenous black community, the children are suffering for the sins of their fathers, plus their own sins. There are many fathers complaining about the behavior of their children, as well as the women they choose to bear their children. It is your choices that are affecting your sons and daughters to the third and fourth generation. It is important for the indigenous people to make better choices. The children are repeating the sins of their fathers. The biracial and mixed children are procreating with the other species of mankind in large numbers because of the self-hate they inherited from the parent displaying this mentality. The children are repeating what they see. If the fathers are displaying exceptional behavior, their children would follow. If you live a lawless life, your children will follow in your footsteps. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places, and brake the images, and cut down the groves, and brake in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it. And he called it Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. The Most High said he would visit the iniquity of the fathers unto the children in multiple scriptures, confirming his judgments. There is nothing new under the sun. The repetitive cycle of rebellion towards the Most High is a learned behavior that plagued the indigenous black people through generational curses. When ancestral spirits come to reestablish evil covenants with you and your children, it is the duty of the parents to recognize the temptation and cast out the devils. You must teach your children how to reject the kingdom of darkness temptation in the spirit realm as well as in the physical realm. If you're not doing these things, you have no right to complain about anything. If the fathers and mothers do not know how to cast out devils, how are you training your children in the way that they should go? You are setting up the next generation for failure if you're not leading your household. You must know how to cast out familiar spirits masquerading as your ancestors to destroy the generational curses traveling in your bloodline. There are generational curses the most high place in the Israelite bloodline that are there as a sign on his people. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. The curse is the most high place on his people as a sign, and other curses the most high place in certain bloodlines, like the curse of leprosy, can be removed by the most high only. When a person submit to the most high and adhere to his statutes, those curses do not have the final say in their life. For example, there are Israelites born in the land of their captivity, and there is nothing they can do about that. That is a sign placed on them from the bloodline curses. 
Despite of the curses, there are individuals living a fruitful life in the land of their captivity because of their personal relationship with the Most High. These individuals are not constrained by the curses the Most High place on their people as a sign. There are generational curses that are plaguing your personal life through sin. Sin gives the kingdom of darkness the opportunity to place strongholds in your life. The generational curses from personal sins are the iniquity I am speaking of. These curses can stop plaguing your family if you and the members of your family make better choices. These generational curses are directly affecting your children and increasing the sins of the indigenous black people. The iniquity is traveling from one generation to the next because the Most High said he would visit the iniquity of the fathers unto their children to the third and fourth generation. I have heard many indigenous black men say, what about the women? Hold them accountable. If the black men who make these comments understand their role in the most High's family structure, they would not make that comment. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, the most High said to Adam, where are you? The most High addressed the one he put in charge. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? When the Most High confront the man he put in charge, Adam, this does not conclude the Most High dismissed Eve's involvement. The Most High judged everyone who disobeyed his commands. Likewise, when a message is directed to the leaders of the black community, it doesn't mean the women and children are excluded. When a child gets in trouble in school, the principal contact the parent or guardian of that child to resolve the matter. If the people are concerned by their nation's leadership, the people address the head leader of that country, the president, to resolve the problem. Likewise, the teachers and messengers in the awakening who address black men are not dismissing the women and children. It is known when you address the leader, the leaders correct the problem. To the black men who are offended when the message is directed towards you, you should be proud that there are people who respect you enough to address you instead of going to your women and children to resolve the problems. In addition, there are people who still believe you can solve the problems that plague your community with the help of the Most High. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. When the Most High said to Adam, where are you? The Most High was getting to the root. To fix the problems in the indigenous black people's community, we must get to the root. Cleaning the surface is not going to fix the problems. The leaders or head of the household must model the behaviors they want to see in their women and children. If the foundation is spoiled and the leaders do not correct the problems, the result is what we're seeing today. Make sure you're passing down generational blessings to your children. That way they will have a chance to live a life that is pleasing to the Most High. Our ancestors felt the same way many do today. The Israelites complain on how the ancestors sin and they are reaping the repercussions. Our fathers have sinned and are not and we have borne their iniquities. How long are we going to repeat ourselves? If you don't like the direction the indigenous community is going, the indigenous people must change their behavior. The decisions we make is going to affect our personal lives and our people collectively. If the head of the households or community is making poor decisions, what do you believe will happen? The bad decisions are hunting down the indigenous people worldwide. Satan is having the time of his life with your sons and daughters because there is no one there to challenge him. The scripture said to pray without ceasing. If the indigenous black men are frustrated with the women and children, are you praying and asking the Most High to help your sons and daughters and your wives? Are you asking the Most High to help you lead them in the direction you should go? Are you repenting of your sins and the sins of your fathers? If you're not doing these things, how do you expect things to change? 
pray without ceasing. Make sure the choices that you've made are pleasing in the sight of the Most High. Repentance is important, especially in the last days. Repenting is completely stopping and turning away from behaviors that is causing you to sin. The beast system has a way of not labeling transgressing the laws of the Most High as sin. Therefore, a lot of people do not view their destructive behavior to be sinful. Because of this, many people do not repent. If the Most High say it is sin, that is exactly what it is. No one is exempt from sin. The scripture said everyone has fallen short. That is why it is important to have a repentant heart. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Religion do not teach the people to repent of their father's sins. Many people are taught to accept Jesus. According to the church doctrine, Jesus would bear your sins and you are saved. The Most High said to his people, you must repent of the sins of your fathers and your own sins to begin to see the hands of the Most High in your life and your people collectively. John preached to his people in his generation to repent because the kingdom of the Most High is at hand. Today we have brainwashed Israelites and indigenous heathens preaching except Jesus because the kingdom is at hand. It is time for the indigenous people to stop listening to the teachings of the synagogue of Satan in religion. You must repent of your sins and the sins of your fathers to see the hands of the Most High in your life to be saved. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Most High said to the Israelites in the book of Leviticus, If you confess your sins and the sins of your fathers, in addition, accept the punishment for your iniquities and humble yourselves. The Most High said he would remember the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. The Most High went on to say in the book of Leviticus, because of the covenant he made with our ancestors, he would not utterly destroy his people in the land of their captivity. If the Most High destroyed his people in the land of their enemies, he would be breaking his covenant. That is why the Israelites remain a few among the heathens. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. Today, it is easy to see how the Israelites are a few among the heathens. Demonic doctrines plague the awakening. If the Israelites continue to believe they are what their father is regardless of the mother's bloodline, there will remain a few among the heathens. The Most High has revealed how the kingdom of darkness used the indigenous people to increase the seed of the serpent's population and whiting out nations all over the world to replace the indigenous people that the Most High said is made in his image and likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. The mixed children of the serpent seed, the biracial, quadroon, and the octoroon are the faces to the nations worldwide. The land of the north belongs to the descendants of Japheth. Today, the land of the north is heavily populated with quadroons and octoroons, claiming Japheth bloodline and the various indigenous bloodlines. The synagogue of Satan has taken the Israelite book of the law, the Bible, which include the history of the chosen people, as well as prophecies, transformed the Israelite culture into a worldwide religion. Through religion, many heathens are claiming the Israelite bloodline. Indigenous black people, you will not find the Most High in religion. The Most High said to his people to come out of religion, the place of bondage. 
And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Because of the massive deception, many heathens are dismissing the true Israelites and claiming the Israelite bloodline for themselves. The seed of the fallen have been destroying evidence throughout history to conceal the indigenous black people's identity. Remember when the synagogue of Satan broke the noses to all the statutes in Egypt that resembled the indigenous black people? They altered the scripture and inserted images of themselves into the scriptures. The book of Maccabees confirmed their diabolical deeds. The perpetual hatred the seed of the fallen has towards the indigenous black people is a long-term hatred that dates to when the Most High said to the serpent, he would put enmity between the serpent seed and the woman seed. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Throughout history, the seed of the serpent has been doing everything in their power to devastate the indigenous black people. Behind the scenes, the Most High has been preserving the remnant living among the heathens. I am not sure how the Israelites could be a few among the heathens if everyone is claiming to be of Jacob's bloodline. The children of the strange women and men are claiming to be Israelites. There are indigenous people of different bloodlines claiming to be Israelites. The scripture said although the Israelites would be as numerous as the sin of the sea, only a remnant would return and only a remnant would be saved. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. How can the Israelites be as numerous as the sin and the Most High said his people would be a few among the heathens? When the Most High scattered his people throughout the world, many Israelites spoiled their seed some against their will and while others did willingly. There are many Israelites spoiling their seed today. This generation has increased the population of the mixed children of the serpent in large numbers. Despite of the infiltration that took place in the Israelite bloodline throughout the years, the Most High preserved a few Israelites who did not dilute the royal bloodline. Throughout the scriptures, the Most High always preserved a remnant for himself. Remember when Elijah believed he was the only remaining prophet of the Most High? The Most High revealed to him that he has 7,000 who have not bowed down to Baal. And I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Today, the number of Israelites wanting to preserve the Israelite bloodline are in the minority compared to the majority who believe they are creating Israelite children with the strange women and men. Just as the synagogue of Satan is fact-checking everyone who speak about the pandemic and their solutions, I must fact-check the people who are spreading misinformation about the indigenous black people. They are workers of iniquity, insinuating that there are no pure blood people in the world and everyone is mixed. In addition, African Americans have a large percentage of European DNA. The workers of iniquity are saying African Americans have up to 30% European DNA. If that were true, that would make all African Americans the third generation from the enslaved great grandparent. How many generations removed are we from the days the slave masters took advantage of the black women? If the African Americans have 30% European DNA, how come many do not have Neanderthal DNA? If there were no pure blood people around, then everyone would have Neanderthal DNA. Until this day, the indigenous black people do not have the strange DNA of the Neanderthals. This is why you cannot trust DNA companies owned by your oppressors. There are some black people in the diaspora, not only the African Americans, that have large amount of European DNA. These individuals are the minority. There are Israelites, despite living in the land of their captivity for over 400 years, that did not mix their seed. The people who are passing around misinformation are looking for ways to disqualify certain people and to continue the oppression. 
Because of the slave masters taking advantage of the slaves, there are many Israelites whose seed was spoiled. The Most High always have a way of preserving his people despite of their circumstances. Nothing catches the Most High off guard. The Most High said, although he sent his people into captivity and send the sword after them for their rebellion, he will not destroy them. When the time comes, he will multiply his people and there will no longer be a few. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. During the time of chattel slavery, there were many Israelite children being born. Due to the slave master's greed, they used to breed indigenous people like they did with animals to sell for profit. They failed to realize why they are breeding our ancestors for profit. They were increasing the population of the Israelites unknowingly. The Most High always used a trial for multiple purpose. Through the slave masters breeding indigenous people for profit, the Israelite bloodline continue and remain intact. The Most High gave his creation the ability to reproduce itself. The Most High would not let a bloodline be cut off unless he allow it. The people who are spreading misinformation do not know the Elohim of Israel and how he operate. They do not know about his sovereignty. The Most High has the final say. No bloodline will be wiped out or whited out completely unless the Most High choose to cut off that bloodline. The workers of iniquity that are spreading misinformation about everyone being mixed are deceiving the masses. The moment an Israelite procreate with a strange woman or man, his or her bloodline is spoiled. The Israelites started their own bloodline with the strange woman or men. Before the awakening, many people, especially the seed of the fallen, denied any indigenous DNA they had. Now that the truth is coming out and history is correcting itself, suddenly everyone is mixed and the seed of the serpent is claiming the small percentage of indigenous DNA they have. The same way a person can white out their seed, the individual can reverse the infiltration. The biracial and their children must procreate with the indigenous people to reverse the infiltration. It takes four generations to cleanse your seed. Although the Most High is preserving the royal bloodline since he scattered his people all over the world, the Israelites remain a few among the heathens. The Most High said he selected the Israelites not because they were righteous or a people who were numerous. The Most High selected the Israelites because they were the fewest of all people. Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. Today, the heathens are claiming the Israelite bloodline. The synagogue of Satan stole the Israelite heritage and gave it to the Gentiles to control them in religion. Also, the Israelites who spoiled their seed, their mixed children are claiming the Israelite bloodline. There are many indigenous black people who claim the Israelite heritage but are not. You cannot convert nor marry into the Israelite bloodline. You must be born an Israelite to be an Israelite. To transfer the Israelite bloodline to the next generation, you must marry and procreate with another Israelite to transfer the Israelite heritage to your children. Not all who look like you are of your bloodline. The beast system did a phenomenal job of distorting bloodlines. Israelites, I hope you are beginning to see the importance of making good choices. Do not let the beast culture influence you through demonic doctrines and self-hate cut off the next generation. Some indigenous people through the sins of their fathers are of a new bloodline. The next generation need for this generation to make better choices. The time has come for you to humble yourself and repent. The scripture said in the last days, people will be lovers of themselves. Iniquity would increase. This know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. 
To the remnant, make sure you are making preparation to preserve your bloodline to give the next generation a fighting chance. The time has come for the indigenous people to pass on generational blessings to their children. Make sure the blessings are reaching your children in the third and fourth generation. Regardless of what the synagogue of Satan does to interfere, the Most High will always preserve a remnant. Israelites and indigenous people all over the world aim to be a part of that remnant. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children, like olive plants round about thy table, behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children, and peace upon Israel.